Right after 9-11, I had an immediate shift in my thinking. I really grappled with what did it mean to be an artist during wartime? Is it impossible to understand? So a civilian back home and a frontline war experience, is it impossible to bridge that gap? I wanted at least to explore it through art. What we're really interested in is less about you know, how a 60 millimeter mortar works or what are the effects of bombs on a major European city. It's more about your personal experience and especially those of you who uh, were in the rank and file. Charlotte Spade was a combat nurse in Vietnam, experiencing a great many traumatic things. Um, in fact, much more than many soldiers ever see. Part of the conversation here is about how this affects families. It's not just the veterans themselves. Jeannie, that's why I wanted you to come as well. You know, Bob, you've been living with these dreams for a long time. Bob served in Korea. And then Mike Queering, who was, uh, flew 35 missions, 34, 34 missions uh, over Germany. The B-17 is a waste gunner. Um, on your 34th mission was when you were terribly wounded. Everybody had a, a first aid kit, and of course then they uh, injected me, you know, with uh, morphine or whatever we had, and see, and then just patched me up, you know, as much as they could. But what they were patching up was my leg, mm, not, your stomach. not my stomach. See? They couldn't see that. See? And then when we got back in, why they shoot the red flares, mm -hmm. and your bomber gets first call. Because that's notification there's wounded? Yeah, um, wounded, yeah. Did it seem like forever? <laughs> I can't imagine. What it because was the time. we would come back on three engines. I've stumbled on this picture in my research that said everything I was trying to say in this whole 10 years of work. And it was, a, it was an image from World War I of a soldier in a, in a trench, and he was sitting there in the mud with one small tomato plant growing right next to him. In the dirt all around him were his comrades. It was very clear you could see their uniforms, or even in one case, a shoe still sticking out of the ground. And there's just no mistaking what he knew very fully what he was doing and this strange process of trying to grow something on top of that soil for his own survival. So this piece is, is driven by those ideas. It reminded me of where I was in uh, the hooch that I lived in. It was very muddy and there was no, there was no grass and it was pretty bad. And uh, actually, a couple of us decided to plant flowers. And we planted some marigolds. And we were out there digging in this hard clay. And then it would be mud and slush. And, but there were, at the end of our, our struggle of planting them um, and watching them grow and all of that, there were like maybe three or four little marigolds that came out of the whole package, you know. So, but Did you, you ever know, know that term, defiant garden? Uh, no, I did not, no. Because I, I found, too, that like that would be a defiant garden. I mean, that fits the definition. Yes, yes. it's but, great. But as a tradition, even amongst military personnel, don't seem to be connected from one war to another, that that, that has been this connection, which maybe, again, that's the role of a historian or an artist. And I have the saying of mine that I can't touch a material until I've earned its respect. And so, you know, when you're holding shrapnel or a locket of hair from a Civil War soldier. Everything I used, I used with the most respect I could muster and uh, the most thorough groundwork is on the historical side of it. What you have here, what our families felt while we were there, you know. You're not rewriting history to your view. You are writing history the way the damn thing happened. I think, for me, what you're saying is something that we as soldiers didn't hear enough, that the pain of the home front was in its own way 
just as serious and just as difficult on our brothers and sisters, mothers, girlfriends, fathers. I love the idea that you look death in the face, but there's always life that creeps out of it, all around it, the tomato plant, poppies on a grave. And I think that, holistically speaking, is what you're saying, that good things will come even though there was terrible things there. And that, that to me, speaks a lot. I mean, I was never in a war, but he was. And there are times that he feels guilty that he came back and others didn't. But life goes on. We had eight children. It goes on, you know. It, it, it's, it is open-ended. It'll keep going. And they'll remember. They'll remember. <laughs>